And we're live once again. Welcome to Haas Tech 2020. We are on day number three, I believe. Day number three. It's all coming. <laughs> it's all already coming together. I know. So today we're out in the products area again. If you watched us yesterday, this is building two of the Haas Automation Factory. Um, tomorrow we will be back. Back in the demo room. Well, I think we start here, and then we're going to go over to the demo room to look at Haas tooling. I think we're doing both. So like we've been doing all week, the same format. We're doing two live sessions every day. Today we start at 9 a.m. obviously. That's right, and then, and then we take a break in between to uh, look at some pre-recorded video content that many of you haven't seen yet. That seems to be going over really well. We have a lot of people sticking around for that. And then we're gonna come back at, at noon today. Yep, so the pre-recorded content's got a bunch of cool stuff. We've got a full factory tour that Andrew did. That's right, Brian did a, a tour of our sheet metal facility, which was also really cool. We've got some cutting demos. Uh, some, some maintenance videos, maintenance some other cool service. stuff in there. Yep, a whole That's bunch right. of cool So if you stuff. have time, check that out. And then... But so, for sure, come back at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern for the second live session. That's right. So today, in a minute, we'll get to it. We're gonna look at uh, a much anticipated machine, uh, Haas's interpretation of, of a mill turn. Yep. And then Brian and uh, Corey will be looking at um, an APL fit up to a UMC 500. Yep. We've got an auto parts loader with the UMC 500. And if you saw the auto parts loader presentation that Andrew and Milton did on Monday, this one will be a little different. So I encourage you to stick around and watch it. So before we get started, we want to mention the promo that we have. That's right, right you got to mention the promo. Yep. It's called Unlock the Savings. And if you go to HaasCNC.com, right on the homepage, you'll see it. You can't miss it. And this week, we've added a little kicker. That's right. So you're going to get an additional 5% off the great deals that are already there. Um, we have a really wide variety of machines that we're discounting. Um, that discount lasts until Friday the 18th, so, two days from now. So if you're looking at, at getting a machine or you're even thinking about it, as you always say, take the time to, to build and price it. it. You don't even have to talk to anyone. Just go to the build and price page uh, and you'll see the discounts yep. there. Build and price your machine, get a quote, um, or contact your Haas factory outlet, of course. Okay, I think it's time to get started yeah, here. Yeah, let's get started with uh, so, maybe one of the most anticipated yep. machines we have here at the I'm show. I'm gonna step out and see you a little you bit later, Brian. Yep. So, the VMT 750. Now, thus far uh, in the show, pretty much everything we've been looking at is a production machine or a machine that's going into production pretty pretty soon from now. Uh, I just want to emphasize that this is a fully concept machine. Yeah. This is Haas's first uh, first approach to a mill turn machine, but out. Even saying that, this machine is fully functioning, as we're going to see in a second here. Yeah, uh, we hope. I'm going to give a little bit of the credit to that to uh, Bob Singh, one of our, our another one of our product specialists here, and uh, he's been working with his baby for the last couple of weeks. Yep. Uh, fine tune it. Yeah. Making sure Hopefully. there's no red lights. We'll see. Um, so, a, a machine like this, I mean, this is a obviously it's sitting on a, on a VF base here. Yeah, it's uh, it's based on a VF three YT and we've added an ST15 lathe spindle to the table. So it's on the left-hand side on the X-axis, so. Right, and so this is- There you go, you turn mill. It's kind of a more, kind of a more mill-focused uh, interpretation exactly, of yeah, a mill yeah. turn than, yeah. than lathe-focused. Yeah, it's definitely based on the mill first, yeah. But we're gonna see that it still does, it, it, can, it can turn apart just fine, as we're gonna see in a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, we're gonna do a demo. We're gonna start with the lathe portion first, so let's talk about that first. Yeah, then, let's yeah? do it. All right, so, um, We'll talk about the work envelope. It, right now, if I only take this tool to the turning position from the tool tip to the front of the collet, the Haas lathe collet, which we'll talk about later That's as right well, at the end there. is about 23 inches. Um, and then on the X axis, sorry, there I go with the lathe guy again. <laughs> on the Z axis, which is your diameter, uh, from the tip to the center of the, the part is about six and a half inches. So you can get a, a 12 inch, 13 inch diameter part safely in here with that, the right tool. When, I, when we were first looking at this machine, I don't know, more. Uh, probably two weeks ago, I was thinking that we'd be looking at a work envelope <laughs> like oh, you, that. Yeah. But really, it's it's pretty substantial. It equates to the same as, it's more than an ST15 actually, but uh, it, it will change. The work envelope will get shorter as the B-axis rotates. So that is another thing we have on the machine. Right, we're gonna see that the, the, the spindle head rotates 90 Correct. degrees. Yes. So yeah, you would eat up some space when you're fully rotated like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just so, to explain the difference, I'm just gonna go into yeah, the- Yeah, you wanna talk yeah. about the spindle, I think? So yeah, so we've got the, HSK, HSK63A, and we've got the standard turn mill turning tools in that, in that, right, in that so spindle. Right, so it's off the shelf tooling. This isn't some custom tool that we made for Yeah, it's for just this off thing. the shelf, yeah. Right. So, and what's gonna happen is the tools get loaded in here. If there's a turning tool, we'll use M19 to orientate to the turn position, and it'll lock into place with a break, and then we can start turning, so. Right, so it's held, that's how you hold it rigidly during the turning operation. Yeah. And that's what we're gonna see right now. So let's start with that. 
Well, let's maybe real quick, you want to tell us, so let's say I have a Y-axis lathe. Yeah. What are the benefits of going with something like this? Well, on the Y-axis lathe, you're restricted because you're Y-axis and your X and, and, and your X you minus as well. Much, you don't have yeah. that much travel on Y-axis. So axis. yeah, um, you end up when you start milling, you end up the only option is using C-axis, which is fine, but it's not the go-to way to really mill. You really want to use your X, Y, and Z, and this machine allows that to right. happen. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's uh, let's let's fire it up. Let's fire it up. What everyone's <laughs> been waiting for. Okay, so we're doing, we're starting with a turning, right? We're going to start with a turning, so there it is, it just orientated. I don't know if anybody can see that, and okay, we're going to so come in. Sal, you're going to push in a little bit here to see this? The brake's coming on, it's just going to face the bat, and then we'll start turning. All right. So, although it is a concept machine, we are still using recommended speeds and feeds with this insert. So it is running at about 1200 RPM, uh, depth of cuts 100 thousand side, feed rates in inches per minute, it's 20 inches so a minute. So your metal removal rates are uh, pretty, six, pretty standard, right? It's 16 thou per rev, it's actually on the high end of that insert recommended, so... Yeah, it looks like it's getting pretty good. It's cutting solid, it's just like the lathe, so... Yeah. I'm excited because, you know, this is a concept machine and it works so well, so I'm... So far. <laughs> like, yeah. Now we've, you've had a lot of successful runs with this thing, so we yeah. shouldn't, have, shouldn't see any surprises, I'm hoping. Like maybe I said, we have a get, a get out of jail free card. There you go. Do, but yeah. uh, maybe not. <laughs> so we're just roughing up a simple profile. We're going to come in now with the finish tool. Okay, so uh, yeah, of course, oriented to uh, to take the tool out with the tool changer. Yeah, locking it position. I'm just going to check the R value is correct. Just to make sure it's engaged. Yeah, so you've got optional stops in here so you yeah. can. Like I said about the x-axis and the y-axis being larger, you can actually put a larger part in here that you can turn and mill here, whereas before maybe you do you had it on two machines. So right, right. So it does, yeah, it definitely gives you more options. More options in terms of clear in terms of travel this way and yes. a part a size part you could fit this way. Yeah, and the final lift tool we're going to use is the groove tool. We're just going to make a little groove at the back so we can start showing you the milling. Right, and so it's probably obvious, but each time now. You've got a different uh, M19 orientation here for this tool, straight on to the to the part that you did for the for Correct. the turning insert. Yes, yeah. But right. like I said, these are standard holders, but all these lathe tool holders. So. so what you would be typically the alignment of your of your tool stick that you might typically be be setting with uh, you know between the tool holder and and the turret is now accomplished all just by an M19 a different Ex M19 setting, right? Exactly. Yeah. And. Let's, let's talk about the lathe portion, it's just you finished. Bet. You bet. So, what what makes me excited about having a, a lathe tool inside a mill spindle is I'm always worried about the neighbouring tools getting on, in the way. On a regular lathe. On a regular lathe in a turret, you're always, you're always worried about tools hitting the jaws or hitting the power or hitting the chuck. Right. This tool, I'm not worried about that. It's all by itself in there, right? Yeah. There's no turret and there's no neighbouring tools, so that's, that's the exciting bit. Plus, on a lathe, you've only, you're restricted to how many parts, how many tools you can put into a turret, and here we've got 50 tools. Right, you might have a, I mean, commonly maybe a, a 12 station turret or something. Exactly. So this has got yeah. like four times at least that many. Yeah, you've got 50, 50 tools in there, plus you don't have to worry about clearances, so there's no taking tools out of one position, swapping tools around, and you can build up such a, a big tool magazine of parts, so you can do all range of different parts without setting up Right, right. Tools you've got off. a lot more, a lot more jobs you can run potentially before you Re have to start doing new, setup time. new tool offsets and stuff like that. There you go. Yeah. Cool. So now we're going to talk about now we're going to do the milling. Uh, the All first right. thing we're going to talk about is really is the B axis. That's the the different feature we've got on this VF3. So here we go with the the mill portion. All right. So of course you go move away to a safe position and do the tool change. Yeah. So we're gonna watch it do do the milling first, and then maybe we're gonna take a look well, again at it. Well, if Sal can get in the there, axis. if Sal can get in there, the first thing we're gonna do is actually go towards the part, and it will orientate to the B axis of five degrees. It's just like slight little portion. So you're doing several different different yeah. angular positions. Yeah, the B axis goes from zero to ninety degrees, and, and what that allows is is for us to do angle planes, so we can machine features on different angle planes. So today we're doing it on five degrees. Then we're going to move over to 15 degrees and we'll show some, uh, we'll we'll show some, some drilling as well, as well, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so the 90 just, degree part is the, the part that scares me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so we're just building out a, a flat and then we'll do a little pocket and then it's just gonna move out of the way. But as you can see, as it's traveling in X, the Z's moving as well. So it's keeping that five degree flat perfect. Right, so you can't, it's, it's a little bit difficult to see here on five degrees, but when we get to the 15 degree, particularly You'll, with the drill, yeah. you can see that those things are moving in, in you know, simultaneously, they're, of course. They're moving in sync, yeah. Right. So kind of similar to how you do on a, very much similar to how you do on a Y-axis motion on, yeah. on our lathes. It allows you to do um, more intricate and complex parts. Um, so it does bring another dimension to, to this lathe, mill and B-axis, yeah. Right, right. So that was, oh, that was all okay, all the five degree there. That was the so five now degree. you're reorienting, or you're gonna do a tool change? We're gonna do a tool change. We're gonna do a, a on the taper there, it's 15 degrees. We're gonna mill a, a keyway. Okay. So that's gonna orientate to 15 right, degrees. So there you and go. there you go, yeah. Now obviously here, if you didn't have those those uh, axes moving simultaneously, up and down and in and out, you'd, be, you'd just be digging a big trench in your part. Yeah, you'd be making a bit of a mess really. Yeah. So. <laughs> and probably, it would certainly breaking the tool as yeah. well. Yeah. So these are Haas tools in here, by the way, right? The, the end mills you've just seen right now and the one before that, they are Haas tooling. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. we'll take a quick look at those at the end. Yep. So usually when you're doing complex stuff like this, it's done on several different machines, special fixtures. The cost can go up. I've just stopped the machine because we're not using any cooler. I'm just going to okay. blow the chips off before right. we drill it. And then in right, so you're yeah, this gives you the opportunity to do much more complex parts. It's what, that's what you're going to use a machine like this for. Yeah. You have a you kind of have a story about how engineering here is uh, probably most people know yeah. that engineering in Haas is always kind of trying to simplify things, yeah. which is always a good idea. Okay, we're just going to quickly let's, watch this. Yeah, let's self can get in and watch this. So, we're at 5 degrees. We're going to put a couple of holes into that pocket we just milled. But then we're going to swing around. It should play the part. Go across to B90. Yay. There we go. There you go. That scares me every time. And we're going to punch a couple of holes in the front face as well. That is so, slang. like I said, the options on this you, to make intricate parts is right. So you could do a, a, a host of different kinds of machining on the front face of the part. Yeah, and also the B axis, it, you can machine on it, so you can do curved machining. You can do contour so machining. So you depends. don't. Yeah, we don't have uh, tool center point control active on this machine. Not on this yet, machine right now, but it will be. Certainly going to be planned for that, yeah. right? And then the final tool is just going to come in and do chamfer the profile right yeah like you said with engineers they've come down to the shop and they've said hey Bob we're gonna design this uh, and I'm said you know, to keep the cost down they've actually split that one component into two different designs so they can machine them easily right right uh, you might you're gonna have some milling and some turning yeah it, and so can, forth. it can it can cycle time and cost goes up so they reduce that by splitting up the parts um, but, but this, this machine, machine kind of allows you to go the other direction it right? goes the other direction yeah I walked the shop a couple of weeks ago in assembly and found quite a few components that we could actually reduce into one just by having this one machine here. That's slick. And there's and there's a huge number of examples of that out in industry. You know, you, there's plenty of complex parts out there where you need this kind of machine yeah. for that kind of work. Exactly. Yep. That's okay, the so we did all of the all of the chamfering there. Yeah, so that's all finished. Um I'll show the B axis just to show you about yeah. the yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna just show us uh, what you call vector jog, right? Yeah, um, John mentioned it in the in the showcase yesterday for the GM2 right. Right. about if you are doing it at a vector, of doing it at an angle and you're drilling and alarm goes off. And something goes wrong. <laughs> Does something ever go wrong? No, no nothing ever goes wrong. But yeah, yeah your drill's stuck inside the part and you don't want to break anything. Um, it's going to be really hard to come out at that axis. Yeah, because, yeah if you couldn't jog those, if you can't jog the axes together, then you're yeah. going gonna to break something. Something's going to break. So we'll just, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just come down here, move the B axis to a, a certain angle. Let's go 25 degrees. Okay, so right now, if that's stuck in a part, you're not going to get it out by using X, right, Y, right, or Z. Right. So, but you can. Like you were saying, you're probably gonna, you're probably going to take the part out if you can. Yeah. And and pull it off of the drill. Yeah. But a vector jog is it's easy to. It highlights the whole. Yeah. So that's cool. So that there you know you're in that mode. Yeah. So now, as you can see, as I'm going up in Z, the X table is moving across as well. Right. Right. So that's so real. Yeah. Safely. You can really see that. Yeah. You can see the simultaneous motion there. Exactly. Uh, easily. Now all you've got, all you've got to do is uh, remember which way to go, right? That's true. Yeah. Not being a, a machinist, <laughs> that's uh, that's my problem. Yeah. And that's it. That's the cool. Milton. Well, let's um, 
we want to take a quick look at some of the tools that we're using here, right? Yes. This is all stuff that's on HaasTooling.com. Yes. If Frank can pull up Yeah, Frank, the first you want slide? to pull up those slides? Um, yeah, cool. so the, the, the second section, the mill section, we were using two end mills and a drill. That's from HaasTooling.com. Right. So we got those here, uh, end mill, and, the, and, and then this is one of the inserts you're using. As now, well, the lathe right? inserts are assumed to be released. Yeah, the, they, the lathe inserts aren't on, on HaasTooling.com yet, but they're soon to be there along with. Uh, a host of other stuff that you're going to see tomorrow yeah. uh, over in the demo room. Um, but we also want to look at another thing that uh, is coming soon. Yeah, it's a Haas collet chuck. And this is it here. Um, we were talking before about reducing setup times. Uh, like I said, with 50, 50 tools in the pocket, you can set up a whole number of range of parts and save those tools and never have to remove them. Right, and the other half of that is, is, is something this, like this. this um, this option is fantastic. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say we finish this setup. Out, essentially yeah. swap out a job, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll take this part out. I'll give you that. Here's what I prepared earlier. Right, so I'm going oh, to use that's the, right. I can't give you that first. Yeah. What so am I doing? I'm going to use a collet gun. I'm going to remove that. All right, so that. you pull one collet out. Yep. Go blow it out. Yeah. Make sure everything's clean. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that index is in there. You've got some kind of alignment tab or something, right? Yeah. That's it. All right. That was pretty quick. So far, so good. <laughs> this is the easy part. So now we've got a one inch bar, stick out what size you want. You're actually ready for the next you're setup. You're completely switched over and your, your work offset is probably going to be off of the face of this truck. Exactly. Right? So, so that has to continue running. Change. Yeah. You've set up for the next job. reference is that. Correct. So you've got a huge number of tools up here for a huge number of jobs and you brought really quick swap or yeah. switch out there. So the gun and the, and the collet chuck plus the master jaws, they're right. all going to be available soon. On Fantastic. Has, has so, su super high production possibilities here. Yeah. So that kind of wraps it up for the VMT 750, right? Yep. Thank That's you it. so much for showing us around and getting this demo running because I know people are pumped to see it. I certainly was. Um, so as, I, as we were mentioning, this is definitely a concept machine. And given that, we're really interested, interested in knowing what you think of it and what, uh, you know, what ways would you use this machine? Um, uh, a little birdie told me that we're thinking about a, a price range in the $150,000 range. Um, so take that into consideration. Of course, there's a lot of complexity here. Um, what kind of parts would you make with a machine like this? What kind of applications do you see it being used in? And would you do things, you know, do you have any suggestions? We'd love it if you'd uh, add something in the comments or in the chat uh, to let us know what you think of this. And uh, we'll, be we we'll be watching those carefully. Given that, I think we're ready to switch over to uh, the next machine here. Um, coming up, we have Brian and Corey on the UMC 500 over here, and they are going to look at how we've attached the automatic parts loader to that machine.